Hello friends and welcome to my Knight Rider build part 3. Thought I'd pop on camera for a change and uh, say what's up to you all and give you a quick update as to where things are at as we start this video and then we'll get to some of the work. First and foremost, I mentioned I need to sand these down. These are the little rings that go onto the wheels here. They're a little bit too large around the edge to fit right in there. So what I'm going to be doing is some dremeling. You can see I started this one here already. I'm going to dremel around the edge to try to make that kind of taper inward a bit more. Then that way they can slide right in. The other thing I've done is removed the rest of these hubcaps from the original Knight Rider uh, toy wheels. So that was a pretty complicated process of cutting all this crap out. And these things are super nasty with like dog hair and gunk and all that kind of stuff in there. So uh, got those cut out. I had to hollow out the inside a bit so that they can actually go onto the wheels uh, and sit flat enough. So I am actually gonna have to dremel out this centerpiece a bit more too to make that more uh, hollow so it can sit flush on there. Uh, so that's what's up next and then uh, I'll check back in and we'll keep it going. So this is my janky little DIY trap box that I made. I use this for sanding pieces so that the uh, you know, little granules and bits don't go all over the place. And then I actually have a, a hose routed into it as well from the vacuum so that it'll suck up the excess stuff. You don't want to be breathing in plastic and, and little bits of plastic, you know, scraps and, and whatnot. So this is a way to just kind of try to mitigate some of that. I also have the windows open for some ventilation. I usually have a little box fan in the window kind of pulling it out to extract some of the extra fumes and whatnot that are generated from the heat up against the plastic when you're sanding it at this kind of rate. Okay, so I've got the first one of these trimmed down. The issue I'm running into is that it's like just a millimeter too big. So it kind of wants to, if I push it down, it wants to pop out in certain other areas. Um, I thought about trying to cut a section out of it, but I don't want to mess up the sort of rhythm of the little spokes or whatever. So. I think what I'm going to do is just glue it in evenly like this because it's pretty, it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a lip, but it's not anything that uh, detracts from it in my opinion. So I think the move is going to be to glue these into place like that, put the hubcap in over it and boom, we've got our kit wheel. Uh, I still need to hollow this out. These are also a little bit scratched up. Um, you know, they're a probably 35 year old toy. so. You know, it's probably the best I was going to find, um, but I'm going to try to maybe buff them or something so that they have a little more shine to them. So uh, anyway, up next, I'm going to do the rest of these and then do the interior of those hubcaps and then hopefully they'll all glue into place pretty easily. Okay, now that the wheels and the hubcap pieces are on, I need to start doing some body work on this thing. So next on the agenda, I'm gonna start drawing where the door seams are and I'm going to scratch them into the plastic using a scribe tool, which is just like a dense metal pencil shaped tool with a, a point on the tip of it. I'm gonna add a piece of trim here because they have this kind of like half round trim that goes on the, the vehicle. I want to make the door handles. You know, eventually we're going to need marker lights on this thing. There's like a, a little vent right here, gas cap door. So a lot to be done on this guy still. And then I also need to make a rear shelf for this thing uh, to cover up this gap in here. I mean, it's just, it's just basically an open area in there. So I'm going to put a shelf that extends across like this. So yeah, still lots to do and I'm going to go ahead and get to it. A little progress check in here done a few things I've cut the door seams in I made some little door handles for either side here 
by just cutting a small piece of styrene and sanding down the edges to give it that kind of curved look that door handles have. This is the scribe tool, by the way, just a, a sharp point, you know, pretty, pretty dense metal. And then you just, you know, scrape it right into the plastic. So I made this trim line too. I sanded the, the front end a little bit just on some of the edges that were poking out. And then next I got to build the rear shelf for this. So what I'm going to do is I bought these kind of little L-shaped uh, styrene brackets. So I'm going to use this as a, as a cleat here to mount the rear shelf to. So I'm going to glue that to the back of the seat here. And then I'm going to take this piece of styrene and cut it to fit so that it contours with the inside. So that once this is on here, it'll have a rear shelf to sit flush on top of these wheel wells here. I'm going to need to figure out something for the interior door panels as well. The challenge there is that because of the curve of them to actually fit it onto this chassis, you physically have to pull it wide like this because it just wants to hit. It doesn't want to go down. So you have to pull it wide so that it sits snugly. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to sort of build a shelf that stops right there so it doesn't go past, but will also sit where it's supposed to. So those are the kinds of challenges that make a, a build like this difficult when you have to figure out, you know, logistics of how this thing can go on here. You're finding a workaround for something that's just a, a byproduct of it being a toy. Uh, but yeah, we're going to keep going uh, and uh, I'll check back in with more progress. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am currently shaving the letters off of these tires here. I'm putting them in this little baggie because I figure I can use the letters, some of them at least, for you know some kind of badging later on or something if I'm working on another vehicle. So essentially what I'm doing is taking a carpet knife and I'm just filleting these off <laughs> and then I'm sanding this down. I don't want to overdo it because this is the only set of these tires that I have and I don't want to take off too much and end up with like lumpy divots or anything. I already kind of got a little too deep on one of these, so I'm hoping to even that out a bit. But I mean, you can see they were just, they're, they're very raised and three dimensional. I mean, we're talking like one to two millimeters and it just translates to a lot in this scale. So I thought it would look better if I just shaved them off. Okay, so I went ahead and shaved the tires down uh, to get rid of the lettering. And now the issue is that there's some nicks and dents from where I did that, where the, the knife blade kind of got away from me a little bit. And then, as you can see, it's just kind of a flat plane now. Like, uh, and I mean, it always was, but now without the lettering, it's like exaggerated a bit more even. So what I'm going to do is add some clay to it to give it more volume so that it looks like a tire because tires you know from a from an angle you can see there's a bit of a kind of a like a swelling to them i guess uh for lack of a better term so we're going to approximate that with some epoxy sculpt now uh i'll have a link for this in the description below for people who want to check this out but this is really great stuff for those who are unaware it is a two-part epoxy and you mix equal parts and what you get is an air curing clay that you get probably about an hour. I think it says 90 minutes is your working time, but realistically it starts to harden up way before then. So I'd say about an hour for general work, maybe, you know, 40 minutes for like more fine detail stuff. But this stuff is great because it cures like rock hard and you can just, I mean, you can drill it, you can sand it. Uh, you can glue it. It's it's really versatile stuff. It, I use it to sculpt just about anything that gets added on to like an action figure, for example, like hair or facial features. Here's the Michael Knight head that I made. This was a Jensen Ackles shrunk down from 6th scale to 12, one twelfth scale. He had very similar facial features to David Hasselhoff. So I just uh, added cheekbones and a jawline and hair to him uh, using this Aves. And is real tough stuff. I mean, I, I'd have a real hard time 
chipping this off if I tried. So we're gonna use that to make the sidewalls of the tires a little more voluptuous. So you mix two parts. It doesn't have to be exact, I find. And then I keep a bit of water nearby. This stuff is pretty tacky. This one is like a taffy type consistency and this is more like a softer clay. And you combine the two and you get, you know, somewhere in the middle, but it, it wants to stick to your fingers. In order to alleviate that, you use a little bit of water when you mold it and that lets you smooth it out more. It lets you kind of, uh, it, it keeps it from sticking to your hands. So I get them about even like that, twist them together a bit and really just start mashing them. And then you just do this until it's one consistent color and uh, you'll feel the consistency difference as well. Now I've got the epoxy mixed and I'm actually taking a little bit and just testing it as a gap filler. You know, I think typically you want to use something like Bondo or there's some other stuff out there, but you know, I try to avoid stuff that's going to have a real strong chemical aroma and just be like generally bad to breathe in. And you know, this stuff is like a solid compound, so you're not dealing with particles or particulates from it. And these sculpting tools, you can get at any art supply store. I'll, I'll put a link in the description for some of these. And you see how using a bit of water just really helps smooth that stuff out. It's really great stuff. All right, one down. That was tiring. Yeah, I, I feel like I learned a couple things doing that. Namely that I don't want to do it three more times, but <laughs> here we are. Um, I, I am going to have to sand this a little bit too, because no matter how much you smooth it over, you know, in the sculpting stage, like, I mean, you can see the light catching a bunch of inconsistencies there. So, but you know, for something that's going to be blacked out, I think it's going to look just fine. Ultimately, it's going to look a lot better than if I had left it like this and just painted it. So going to do the next three and, uh, let those cure and I'll move on to some more interior stuff. Uh, probably the door panels. Okay, I got the trim on and getting ready to do some door panels here. So what I did was I traced the inside of the door on the car, the interior of the, the shell. And then from that template that I created, here are the wheel wells on either side. I looked at a photo online of what the door looks like and I drew where everything goes. Uh, and then I also kind of sketched a profile of what the door would look like if you were looking at it from you know, if it were open, if you're looking at it from the end on, just to give myself an idea of, of what it looks like in three dimension, I'm gonna be building up the door panel itself with styrene. So this will be a single piece here. Um, and then I'm gonna add these other pieces onto it. So this will be another piece of half round. This is just a piece of like kind of stripped lining that's black that curves like that. This is gonna have to be a build out of styrene as well. So a lot of work ahead of me still. Devil's in the details, this is kind of where it gets fun. The other reason I did this on tracing paper is because I can just flip it and have the same, you know, I can see it on the other side. So I don't have to make a new template for the left side and hope that they match. I can just use what I already have. So another thing I did was I took this piece of foam that I'm using for the dash and I sketched in the parts that I'm gonna need to hollow out. I don't know yet if this is gonna work. I couldn't think of a, a different way to do this. Like you can sand it and it's pretty dense. So I think it was a really good solution. If I sculpted it out of the epoxy, it would have just been like really heavy and probably kind of hard to keep in place. And this, I feel like will just stick right to the, the lining of the dash. So, okay, so I got the door panel cut out here and 
I got this little piece to be the trim, like the bezel where the the power window buttons are and the, the door handle. And then I was trying to figure out this armrest. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do for that, how I was going to bulk it out. And I have these really thick pieces of styrene that I was using for something else that I cut and they were the wrong size. So I kept them in my scrap area. And if I stack them like this and glue them, I can sand this down so that it's all flush. Now, the other thing I did here is I went ahead and glued another of those like L bracket pieces facing the other way. And then another little strip of styrene on top of that so that when I take this piece and insert it like this, it's gonna have just a little bit more to grab onto on this bottom part here. You can see a little bit from the side here. Okay, so here you can see I've cut out the door panel and I've traced a mirror version of it so that I can have two that are alike here. Okay, so the door panels are just about done. I'm adding another half round piece to these. Doing this kind of stuff is tricky because it, it, the glue does set pretty quickly. So you kind of really gotta get this where you want it. All right, so we've got the armrest on there, the trim pieces, and I'll get this top piece on there to really send it home. So once I finished the door panels, I started trying to tackle the dash a little bit more by carving out these areas that are going to be where the gauge cluster goes. Uh, I ended up reinforcing the bezel a little bit with another thick piece of styrene because it was getting a little too crumbly and a little too weak. So with that extra piece in there, it just helped give it a little bit more support. I also backed the gauge cluster areas with some flat styrene. And then here I'm attaching magnets to the back of the dash. And I'm also doing so on this kind of piece that sticks out uh, where the dash would be attached to in the actual shell of the car. And so that gave the magnet something to attach to. I did it on the back side so that they would have to go through the plastic and not like meet together magnet to magnet and pull each other off of their respective surfaces they're attached to. And that ended up working pretty well. All right, friends. So let's take a look at where Kit is at now. Uh, I've gotten a lot of work done. A lot of the body work is wrapped up here. Now it's mainly just interior stuff and then I gotta do the paint job. So first things first, let's look at it as it is. So with this kind of popped all the way on, that's pretty much how Kit is gonna sit. I'm really happy with how this epoxy turned out on the tires. This, I think this was a good move. It really adds that much more believability and realism to them. You know, the way tires kind of pucker out a little bit, uh, you know, especially like where the rubber meets the road. I've got the dash installed. The magnetizing is going to be somewhat of a semi-permanent fix. I just needed it to be held in place essentially while I do the steering column and the steering wheel. And then once I have everything where I want it and when I get this thing painted, I'm going to keep the magnets as, as is, but I'm also gonna probably glue the back of this with some hot glue to the, the panel underneath. The way this is set up is it's, it's kind of got this curve to it. So I actually had to add a piece of this foam just to kind of push this to be flush with this or like I guess where the, the windshield bezel would be. I'm also going to need to look at some photos and kind of figure out the most believable way to install the windshield. I think painting this will help. It does kind of have this curvature to the like this kind of lip where the hood is but I, I may need to add like some of that half round around the perimeter of the windows to look like weather stripping. I'm gonna need to build some rear view mirrors still and I, and I should probably make a little panel for the interior where the mirrors go as well just to kind of finish out that trim piece. Now one thing I ran into that I wasn't planning ahead for is this door handle armrest situation was butting up with the the dashboard here. 
So I had to cut that back. That's why it looks a little crude right here. So I'm going to have to sand that some more before I paint it as well. I've also cut a channel for the steering column. So I'll be drilling a hole there. Not dissimilar to the way they did it before. I mean, you can see the original toy had a steering wheel that just kind of popped into place right there. So I'm going to do something similar. I'll probably use a wooden dowel as the steering column, have it come out and then make a steering wheel. I'm going to have to build it out of probably some balsa wood. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it because the styrene is a little too um, difficult to cut and shape in, in that thickness that I would need for it. Uh, a good buddy of mine was teasing me that I say styrene a lot in my videos uh, because I use a lot of it, obviously. So I'll probably, uh, I'll probably start calling it different things. Flat Daddy, White Magic. Um, I also taped the door panels into place just to see how they would fit once I put everything together. But as it is, it, it all fits together pretty nicely. The way this fits on the body is kind of odd. Like it doesn't want to line up and I don't know if it has to do with the, like if the plastic is warped. I mean, this thing is older than me, so that very well could be the case, but I'll figure out a way. I've also, I was thinking about trying to attach the shell to the chassis with magnets. Basically, you've got these rods that I broke off. These used to clip into these ports here, but I cut them because I needed to get it out and they were tabbed in there really hard. So I may end up shaving these down flush and gluing a magnet to it and then putting one in here and then seeing if they kind of just pop together. Uh, or I may just leave it like this and that way I can take it off and put Michael Knight in there if I want to. I don't want to make open doors on this thing. It would just be a real pain and I'm not going to be using it in that capacity. So just cutting in the, the door seams is fine for me. But this is really starting to look like kit now. I think the, the most challenging thing of this whole build is going to be the, the windows. I have the, the plastic windows that came with this thing initially and they're way too dark and they're super scratched up. So I'm gonna try to mold some clear plastic to them using heat. We'll see how that goes. This may be the project that, that necessitates me building a vacuum forming machine. We'll see. <laughs> What's remaining is I gotta turn this into a T-top. Kit also had like above the head console stuff, you know, switches and things up here. So that's a bridge I'll have to cross as well. We'll see how that goes. Headrests still need to happen. And then there's a, a little console in the center that's like a box that has buttons and stuff on it. So I'm gonna have to build that uh, and glue it there. And then it's gonna be ready for paint. So. so that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of content, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. That'll let you know when new videos come up. We've got a lot more fun stuff planned for the channel. We're gonna be doing a lot more vehicles, a lot more custom figures, a lot more diorama builds. At the beginning of this video, you will have seen a trailer for my new book, Retroactive. It's a graphic novel that I wrote and drew. It's a spy-fi thriller that's kind of a mashup between stuff like James Bond and Groundhog Day, where there's a time travel element, a fun looping day scenario, and some real heart and human emotions within the story. There's a link to that in the description below if you're curious to check it out. I've also got links in the description to the products that I've used in this video if you're curious about the epoxy sculpt or the styrene and half round, things like that. So thanks again for watching and until next time, keep your head on swivel.